<laughs> That's Kevin Fell, by the way. I also want to thank him. He's the one who's doing all the recordings and all the sessions, so they will be available on our website after, as well as our YouTube channel. So big thank you to Kevin for recording my my speech right now. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so as Deputy Minister of Consumer Services, Hillary focuses on end-to-end -end customer experience of government, bringing together the collective efforts of Service Ontario, Consumer Protection Ontario, and Ontario Digital Services, and more, to deliver simpler, faster, better government services for the people and businesses of Ontario. Previous, previously, Hillary was the Deputy Ex Executive Director of 18F, a digital services agency in the U.S. federal government, and was a, pre and, and was a Presidential Innovation Fellow in 2013. She has worked with governments across jurisdictions for more than 20 years, having previously served as a director at NIC Inc., an organization that helps governments embrace internet-based technologies and approaches necessary for modernization. She was appointed Deputy Minister of Consumer Services in June of 2018. She joined the, digital, or the Ontario government in April of 2017 as Deputy Minister responsible for digital government, and she is also Ontario's digital Chief Digital Officer, leading the province's digi digital transformation efforts. That is a mouthful. I want to welcome Hillary Hartley to the stage. <laughs> so, your presentation is here. Cool, and click here if you want. Awesome. Awesome, thanks so much. That's a lot of digital. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get us started for the day. <laughs> um, hi folks, uh, as Pat said, I'm Hillary, and uh, this is the, the only mic, so just wave and holler if I stray too far and you can't hear me. Um, but uh, here today really, and, and first of all, thank you for showing up at 9 a.m. Uh, to hear me talk to you about government. Um, <laughs> But uh, there are several people on my team here, and uh, at some point I'll get them to stand up, maybe at the end, so you remember their faces and can chat with them. Because uh, the whole point of kind of walking through this is just to tell you a little bit about what we're doing and how we're doing and, and how we're doing it and how we think and how we work. Uh, and I will just start off by saying that, um, you know, there, there's an ulterior motive, <laughs> which is to tell you that government is, is fun. It's hard. It's challenging, uh, but it's impactful, and it's, it's really fun. It's a great team, so I'll just leave it there. That can percolate in your mind as you're, as you're hearing all of this and, and hopefully getting to meet a, a few of the folks on my team the next couple of days. Um, but as, as Pat said, I am the Chief Digital Officer, so that's the, that's the title that I think is probably the most fun, and it's the one I came to Ontario to do, uh, to lead the Ontario Digital Service. Uh, we're a team of about 75. Uh, developers, designers, user researchers, content designers, uh, product managers, uh, all kinds of specialists helping us get this stuff done uh, for ministries and, and with ministries. And, and that's probably the most important part is that we really do try to work with them hand in hand to help them deliver on, on their missions. Um, and, uh, you know, fine folks with me here today can tell you a lot more about that. Um, but, but this word gets bandied about a lot, and it's not a word that I like, um, but, you know, we're stuck with it, uh, but, but, you know, you use what you've got. And so when I, when I talk about transformation and when I talk about uh, digital to, to my peers and to other teams and to folks across the government, it really is, you know, the, the fact that, that we know we need and want to change. You know, transformation is, is big change, right? It's, it's the home run. It's when we've, you know, when we've figured everything out. Uh, but that big change really happens uh, a little bit at a time. And um, to transform government, uh, we essentially, there's a lot of things in our way, if you will. Um, there's people who, you know, have been doing the same thing for decades because it's the way they've always done it. And sometimes they just need someone who hasn't been doing it that way to come in, sit next to them and say, why did you do it that way? Not with judgment, but just literally asking, why are we doing it this way? So that we can start to understand some of those uh, practices that are perhaps outmoded, outdated. Um, 
you start to do that, you start to shift how people approach their work, how they want to approach their work, how they're open to thinking about diving in in new ways. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, it really is, you know, we ship code every day. We're, we're designing, we're, we're delivering products uh, on behalf of government ministries, but this is a, a culture change mandate at the end of the day. And I think governments kind of across the globe are recognizing that that really is kind of the big nut that we've got to crack. Uh, you know, we've, we've got to kind of change IT practices and, and some of our foundational tech, uh, and we're whittling away at that, but, um, and Drupal's a big part of that, which you'll hear a little bit about. But, um, but it's, 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 a, it's a cultural mandate. It's a culture change mandate because uh, we've got to change those entrenched practices. We've got to shift the way people uh, approach how they think about delivering their program and delivering their services because at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is uh, transform people's lives. You know, we're, we're impact junkies. Uh, you know, most public servants that I know would tell you that they're there uh, because, because the work is hard. Uh, but because we get to work with awesome people dedicated to delivering things for, for you and for your families and, and you know and for your neighbors. Um, and so this transformation, like I said, it happens a little at a time. It happens when one person stands up and says, I think we could probably do uh, that, whatever that is, differently. Um, because that prompts another person to step up, and then another person, and another person, and suddenly this stuff is, is trickling out. Uh, and practices start to change, behavior starts to change, culture starts to change, so that we really uh, can change people's lives. Um, so who before today, I guess probably if you knew Nick, you'd probably heard about us, but maybe who before today or before reading that I was the keynote for today had heard of the Ontario Digital Service, just out of curiosity? Raise your hand. Okay, well, actually, it's not. That's a pretty good number, actually. Um, but this is us back in uh, back in June. <clears throat> it told us to do a funny post. So of course, we all pulled out our phones. Um, and and again, digital is in the name. But what does that mean? Well, uh, for us, yes, like I said, we're we're shipping code. But digital, really, you know, kind of the the through line of what we're trying to do is helping the government apply the culture the practices, the processes, the technologies um, of the internet era, of this time that we're in, um, to respond to people's raised expectations. You know, we all have raised expectations of service delivery, of the things that we can get done on this, in our pocket. And uh, that's what digital is. So it is, it's a mindset shift. And we help people put foundational pieces in place. But um, our role at the ODS is to really kind of serve as that center of gravity uh, for the public service, uh, trusted advisors, you know, a team that folks can come to and say, are we thinking about this right? Are we, are we headed in the right direction? Um, how can you help? And, uh, you know, a place that, you know, we can exper uh, experiment with new approaches. Um, and we can kind of uh, be pushing the boundaries and pushing uh, our team forward, which eventually will we'll pull other teams along with us, you know? So going to the cloud, using open source first, um, things like that that maybe uh, the government just said, well, you, you all kind of go do that and experiment with that, and that's great. But the benefit of that is that there is a team doing it, and there are other keen people across the public service wanting to push their teams in that direction. And so they can point to the ODS and say, hey, the ODS is doing this and this guy's not falling. You know, maybe we could follow their lead. Everything from cloud to service design to user research, just the simple practice of user research, which if you're, you know, in industry and building products, you take it for granted. And sometimes there's, you know, this sort of false impression that you can't do that in government, but you can. And so the ODS is here to sort of create playbooks and to uh, put guides together to help other public service servants understand uh, kind of what we do and how we do it. We're really just trying to unleash, uh, you know, this thinking, these methodologies, this kind of lean startup attitude uh, in government with other teams so that we can all start uh, kind of getting things done in a new way. Because <clears throat> this is our mission, uh, you know, uh, we want to simply make government simpler, faster, and better. Um, 
you know, digital government is really just good government. It's government that is focused on you, on us, on the people trying to get some information from your government, on the people trying to, you know, uh, to, to perform a transaction with the government. So uh, again, it's not as much about technology as it is uh, really about empathy. I've joked that instead of uh, Chief Digital Officer, my title should be Chief Empathy Officer. Mm -hmm. Because really, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to teach folks uh, how to have empathy in this context of product development, program delivery, service delivery, um, building kind of you know, the right things in the right way. Um, government uh, can build things that are you know, simple, beautiful, and easy to use. Uh, governments all over the globe are doing it, and uh, really proud that that this team is uh, is is doing that as well. Um, this is something we put out earlier this year. It's called our digital action plan. Um, but you know, we wanted uh, digital action plan was a thing that was asked for, and that was the deliverable. But we didn't want to really put that in the title. <clears throat> and it doesn't really say that anywhere in the intro text or anything because honestly this is just, it's a vision. It's a vision to rally around, it's a vision to rally our team around, it's a vision to rally the other CIOs around, um, you know, around this notion that we have to start with users and we have to deliver together. Uh, we have to be building multidisciplinary teams. We have to be joining policy and delivery at the hip so we're pushing forward together so that there can be experts at the table from both perspectives saying, you know what, uh, the thing that you're thinking about doing is not going to work from both angles, from the policy angle, from the technology angle. We start to prototype something, we start to build something, we learn even more about that. We can go back and change the policy, and make different decisions. We can uh, learn what we need to shift on the technology side. So this is a, this is a vision. It's, it's uh, you know, if any of you are interested, the URL is up there, and uh, we'd love feedback on it. It's kind of a, we put it out as a bit of an alpha, really, to get feedback. Um, but, the, you know, the, the pillars there, as, as you can read, are essentially being focused on people, um, thinking about our role in fostering a digital economy for the province, um, being always, always focused on uh, inclusion, equity, and access, you know, designing for inclusion, certainly, but also what is our role in helping the province push forward on things like broadband initiatives, accessibility, uh, and, uh, and, and, and a lot more. Um, uh, there are a lot of inclusion activities happening across the, pla oh, across the government. Uh, this notion of government as a platform. So again, thinking about, uh, thinking about containers and, and commoditizing things so that we're building, you know, features on top of platforms instead of, uh, you know, things like uh, having to change application logic to change a drop down, for instance. Um, you know, so separating things, you know, kind of modern ways that hopefully I think everyone in this room is, is thinking about building things. Um, and then finally, really talking about the public service of the future and what, you know, how. Uh, we think how I believe uh, public servants need to be thinking of their jobs slightly differently um, and that we are all service designers. We are all in the business of, of uh, making things better for our users, uh, whether or not we see that as our direct job or not. And so kind of talking and, and teasing that out a little bit. Um, you know, we all know what great experiences feel like. Um, you know, Steve Jobs has talked a lot about that in the keynotes over the years. Um, Jared Spool talks about uh, delight, you know, and, and how, uh, you know, products should delight your users. You know, even the little example of like, you know, you scroll, I don't know if it actually still happens, but a great example when the, when the iPhone first did it, when you scroll to the bottom and it just bounces a little, <laughs> and you get that little like, you know, that little rush of, oh, that was cool. You know, it's, it's all those little things. Uh, I, was at, uh, I was at a Code for Canada, Canada event last night, and they were doing a demo of a product that, they, uh, that Code for Canada and the Canadian Digital Service Team in Ottawa, um, and also, by the way, here to recruit for any of those uh, uh, teams and events. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the kind of civic tech ecosystem. But... Um, so they were showing off an app that they built for uh, for the Veterans Affairs uh, 
uh, C, what's the C stand for? VAC, anyway, for Veterans Affairs. Uh, to, it's a benefits finder. So he was walking through lots of really cool features. It's in alpha now. Um, but essentially, he had saved a couple of features, and he had gone uh, on a separate screen to find the, the uh, office location closest to him, uh, and then gone back to this screen, and, and that office location wasn't anywhere there. But uh, he hit, you know, it said print. You know, you can print this page and, and walk into uh, a service location or something and kind of give some information. And uh, he, he had print this page, and the page remembered what he had just gone and saved and put the office location there and everything else. And it's just those little things. Like, I don't know if anybody, I mean, I'm sure a few people in the audience you know, sort of recognized what happened, but I was like, I turned to you know, Katie, who was sitting next to me, I was like, the printed page just printed the, the map from the other thing. Did you see that? That's so cool. <laughs> so it's all of those little things that when government does things right, you notice it, and, uh, and it's not just government, but when an app works well, when a service feels good, you know it. Um, and so, you know, a, a good service, you know, good government is something that, you know, shouldn't need explaining. You shouldn't need training to use it, uh, and it, you should want to use them because they're better. You should want to use those services. Um, so expectations are changing. Uh, our, our world is becoming definitely increasingly better connected, uh, more dependent on technology, um, and it really is therefore kind of shifting that, the paradigm of service delivery. So government has to be rethinking our processes, um, introducing uh, these modern practices and technologies to deliver services that do meet uh, those rising expectations. Because at the end of the day, the outcomes are what matters the most. Again, we're here to, we're here to help people get things done. And, um, you know, the focusing on that outcome, not on sort of the, the plan of how we're going to get there, is really the, the nut of this, which I, is why kind of it always ends up going back to, uh, to empathy for me. But, you know, uh, again, the, the ODS is a team of, uh, of, of nerds that are passionate about this stuff. Um, you know, we're, we talk uh, at length about inclusivity and about accessibility and about really staying focused on the people using our services. Um, and what that does is it rubs off on the people that we're collaborating with so that you do start to see the wave of transformation take hold. You know, one of, uh, one of our biggest KPIs that I don't think we're really great at measuring, but um, the one I like to talk about the most is that uh, not that we delivered something that works. That's great. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it works. Hopefully, it, you know, people like to use it, etc. But more important, at least from my perspective and, and what this team is here to to do in the long term is that whatever team we worked with, um, they understand that the outcome that was produced was not just the shiny thing, but was exposure to how we got it done. And if they say, yeah, we want to do that again with our next project or our next program or, uh, you know, or the next thing that they want to work on, uh, that is the check mark in the success, you know, in the success boss box. Whether they want to do it with us, or whether they want to build a team of their own, or whether they want to, you know, get a vendor to work with. If they want to do what we just did with them, which is, you know, build something, uh, with doing user research and in, in an agile and iterative way, uh, showing up to, you know, sprint reviews and sprint planning and on all of that stuff. They want to do that again. That's a check mark in the success column for me. Um, so many, uh, most, lots of Ontarians are interacting uh, with the government through, through this, through Ontario.ca. So this is our team's, uh, really the, the, the crown jewel in, in all of the stuff that we work on and it's, it's our, our biggest focus is to keep Ontario.ca uh, up and running and alive and well. And, um, uh, you know, just to sort of run through a, a, a few things. Um, we had 64 million unique visits in 2017 with 123 million page views. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's getting a lot of traffic. People are using it. They're also sticking around. Um, the, you know, the average bounce rate was about 31% in 2017. Uh, and people spent an average of two minutes, 43 seconds on each page they visited. Um, and so it is a content 
uh, focused website. So those stats are actually pretty good. You know, to me, it doesn't mean that people got lost and they, they sort of stuck, but they actually found what they needed. They spent time with it. Uh, they read it. Hopefully, they got what they needed and, and were able to get on with their life. Um, so you know, those kind of numbers really, I think, do reaffirm our approach to how we're, we're thinking about uh, putting government content uh, in front of the public and putting services online. Um, we are very much building from the perspective of, of Ontarians, of people, not government. You know, the, one of the, the biggest uh, problems uh, with government over the, the last umpteen years has been that uh, we deliver what we need to say to you, not what you need to hear from us. And so that has been the biggest shift, I think, you know, really trying to stay user focused um, and doing the research to uh, always be implementing things, whether it's a, you know, whether it's just a, a sentence of text on a page or whether it's a heading on a page or, or whether it really is how you're interacting with a service, um, staying focused on, uh, on, on, on how people are using it and what they need, not what we think um, that you need. So uh, content's brought together from a lot of, uh, from multiple ministries right now. Um, we're about halfway through uh, transitioning ministries to Ontario.ca from, uh, from an old uh, look and feel and an old URL. Um, and uh, you know, we're really focused on presenting it in a way that makes sense for people and businesses. Uh, we are taking advantage of a, uh, you know, a modern stack, sort of industry standard uh, technologies and tools that really um, you know, do result in a more flexible, more secure, uh, and frankly, way more cost efficient platform. Um, you know, we were, I think, uh, the first or one of the first projects to, to go open source, uh, to go to the cloud. Um, you know, it's very reusable, and so uh, you know, it, this was one of those efforts that uh, it was, you know, it was an experiment. The CIO told the team to, to go and do it, and, and we're going to learn from it, and we've learned a lot from it, and it's been uh, it's been fantastic. It's, it really has been uh, the 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 little engine that could, because now honestly, the ODS wouldn't exist if that team hadn't taken a stab at uh, at building Ontario.ca like this. So. Uh, we prototyped, the team prototyped Ontario.ca uh, with Drupal 6 in 2011 and uh, launched in 2012 with Drupal 7. Um, our news project, which Nick is the lead developer on, is the environmental registry project uh, with the Ministry of, I don't even remember what it's called now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, the Environment Ministry, because I can't remember what it shifted its name to. Um, but uh, that uh, website's built with uh, Drupal 8, so a lot of the, the newer work that we're, we're building um, off of Ontario.ca is, is Drupal 8. And um, so Nick is, uh, is lead dev on that organizing committee. Thank you very much. He's also uh, speaking later today. I'll give you some details about that later. Um, but you can, you, know, you can talk to him and some of the other folks on the Ontario.ca team about uh, the really cool projects we have underway. Um, we're obviously, or maybe not obviously, but obviously from the logo, using uh, AWS. So we are hosted in the cloud um, from their Montreal data center. Um, there's also some, some uh, OpenShift in there on the, on the DevOps side of things. Uh, Elasticsearch is powering uh, the search and the kind of in-page content indexes. Uh, Nginx really acts as the, as the traffic cop, redirecting users to pages or features they need. Um, and we actually kind of decide whether we're going to display a cached copy or, or, a, or a fresh copy. Uh, and then Angular is, uh, you know, is the, is the um, is the JavaScript you know, stack that's essentially creating the, the web experience, creating kind of the, the front end for, um, for the website. Uh, we're you know, trying to follow all the best practices around uh, everything from plain language, which again, very, very important uh, for government especially. Uh, you know, very clean, simple uh, design layout. Uh, trying to keep it uh, kind of uh, you know, tight and focused, if you will. 
Um, a huge focus on, as I mentioned, on accessibility and uh, inclusivity and kind of inclusive design. Uh, again, thinking about those edge cases so that you know we can make sure that if we're designing for those, we're going to catch all the folks um, in the middle. Uh, and then obviously thinking about um, you know mobility and uh, it's it's optimized for mobile. It's it's uh, kind of mobile first, mobile friendly, but you know really focused on simple to use, interactive tools. Um, to make you know what can feel very complex and daunting, uh, simple and, and easy to access. Um, so Rolo Rolando Henry is doing a talk tomorrow, um, doing a Drupal DevOps deep dive, Saturday uh, at three thirty, and Nick Gajewski is uh, today at three thirty, um, and the title of your talk is "Local Drupal Eight Development is a Dream." I love it. Um, so go check out those uh, those guys today and tomorrow. It's, it's, it's going to be uh, going to be good, and you'll have a chance to kind of dig into to anything else, get under the hood. There was a slide in here talking about the back end, and I'm like, you know what? That's just going to sound like absolute shit coming out of my mouth. So we took that out. Those guys can uh, can fill you in on that. It's just you know, I'm not, I'm not quite that uh, techy. <laughs> But this is our, so Ontario.ca is kind of our main platform, uh, but this is our other platform, if you will. It's not a, it's not a software platform, but it's really a, a framework that's at the heart of both uh, how we work and how we, deliver, how we deliver and how we work with uh, other teams inside government. It's called our Digital Service Standard. Um, it's, uh, it's essentially 14 points that were you know, drawn from successful practices both in the private sector and across government. There are other uh, government jurisdictions that also have digital service standards. This, this practice kind of started uh, in the UK with the government digital service there uh, and has spread. <clears throat> So several uh, jurisdictions have a digital service standard. The U.S. has something they call their playbook, the CIO playbook. And uh, but this is essentially, you know, these are the 14 points that we feel like are quote unquote the good path. If you are following these 14 points and sort of the things that you know we have a, at the website, we try to go into what each one of them means and what success looks like for each of them. But at the end of the day, for, for teams that are trying to work like us and teams that come to us for assessment or for help, if we can walk through these uh, items um, and help them understand both how they're working and what they're doing and, and how they're doing it, um, this is a, a path to success. You know, everything from you know, what does establishing the right team mean? Well, for us, that means it is a multidisciplinary team. You've got all kinds of folks at the table, from designers and developers to policy people and stakeholders, so that from the very first meeting to, you know, sprint reviews, you've got folks at the table um, understanding what's happening with the project and with the product. Um, you know, right there in the middle, understand users and their needs. And sure, users can succeed the first time. Um, one that you probably uh, wouldn't see in the private sector, but there are equivalents. Test with the minister. You know, essentially saying it is important to make sure that your most important stakeholders see this work along the journey as well. Not just the day it's supposed to launch. Involve folks in the process. Um, so the digital service standard essentially exists to uh, to introduce uh, this new approach to the folks that we work with. But as I mentioned, it really is kind of the heart of how we work. So we um, have kind of a three-tiered model of engagement with our government partners. You know, empower, enable, and engage. Uh, empower is where you, know, you can take all of the stuff that we've created for ourselves, our service design playbook, our user research guide, anything that's, that sort of lives within the digital service standard, and, and just go. You can come to us, you can check in, you can say, hey, I'd, I'd love to go through an assessment. Um, but really, follow, follow the standard, use the tools, and, uh, and just go. Um, on the other end of the spectrum is, is Engage, where, uh, like the environmental registry project that I mentioned, we pulled together a team from uh, our designers and developers and user researchers and product people inside the ODS and, <clears throat> and go and work with and uh, for the ministry as you know, a self-contained product team. And then in the middle is, is Enable, uh, where it's maybe a little bit of both. 
where we've got a couple people checking in, uh, for instance, with the, a Service Ontario product to help them think about user research, to help them, you know, think about uh, the steps that they're going to take to uh, to kind of understand uh, to understand their users or to understand how their flows are working, etc. But it's not necessarily a full product team. But at the heart of this is the digital service standard, because that that can be the kind of the through line to. Um, to, uh, to how we, we really, again, shift that Titanic. <laughs> that's, that, that's, the, that's the nut of our work, is just getting folks to kind of work in a different way and to understand really what, quote unquote, good looks like. So this is our, our roadmap. Um, it's on GitHub. If you'd like to, to, uh, to fork it or to change it, we are open to comments. Uh, you can get there through ontario.ca slash digital standard and kind of work your way there, but it is, it is on GitHub and it's certainly open for comment um, and would love to have you take a look. But, you know, since the inception of ODS and honestly since the inception of kind of digital government teams like ours, um, our not so secret mission has been to rub off on the way uh, to kind of rub off on those people that we're working with, um, you know, to, to be the uh, the computer people that you're, it's it's safe to go talk to to computer folks uh, because you're not hiring a change management consultant, you're not you know kind of uh, you know asking people to to help you know to sort of change the entire landscape of how you're working. You're going to, to, to chat with some folks and, and get some advice uh, about technology or about you know maybe how we do something and, and that's that's easier um, and it's it's a little bit of us being able to kind of you know not exactly the wolf in sheep's clothing is not the right metaphor but it, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but essentially to sort of be a little bit under the radar um, helping folks understand that uh, that there is a different way to get this stuff done and that there is a team that exists to point to when you need help and you need backup um, and you'd like to try something different but you're, you're kind of rubbing up you know you're hitting a wall uh, with with your team or your boss or something and so come point at us you know come talk to me and uh, and, and you know, we can sort of help maybe change uh, some of the attitude because uh, the power of having a team in government that's sort of going first and, and probably getting a little bloody going through all those walls doing it. Um, but, you know, the advantage is essentially kind of outsourcing that, uh, that sort of first mover uh, dilemma. So we're, we're reducing that risk and um, giving folks who have amazing ideas and really intractable, intractable problems and very important programs that they're trying to figure out how to modernize and just giving them a different lens and a different way to think about delivery. Um, the strategy is always uh, delivery. Um, and what that means for me is uh, we build things we try not to talk about them or do briefing notes about them or PowerPoint decks about them. We try to just deliver something and let the thing show you uh, kind of what, what we can do. Um, and just to, to end, uh, this is a, uh, these are essentially leadership principles that a couple folks uh, that are on my team, uh, namely Samir Vasta. Shout out to Samir, he's incredible, if you don't know him. Uh, he spent several months kind of going across the OPS, uh, talking, to, uh, talking to folks, uh, you know, asking them kind of what leadership meant to them. And then specifically what leadership sort of in the digital age meant. Um, and, uh, you know, he really distilled all those conversations uh, with me and with folks across the OPS into these eight principles. Um, and so I just kind of want to walk you through how we think uh, about these eight things, which are, which are, you know, they're not new, it's not rocket science, but again, in, in a government context, it makes all the difference to have someone, especially with the title, uh, you know, I won't lie, I didn't know what the hell the deputy minister was supposed to do when I got here. Um, I still don't know if I, I still don't know if I actually know what I'm supposed to do, but I have a, started to understand what that title can uh, allow for me to do. Um, and I feel like I'm trying to understand how to use that a little better. And one of the things, uh, honestly, is to just be able to stand up in front of other teams and say stuff like this 
and to uh, and to let them know that that my team is trying to to live these principles and, and that they have a place to go if some of this stuff doesn't make sense in their organization uh, it's been pretty powerful and that's been a, a really exciting part of the job um, but we really are you know talking a lot about servant leadership and the idea that you know people at the top are here to support uh, everybody else. It's a you know, top-down hierarchy and transformation or, or change management by memo does not work. Uh, so we got to model behavior that we want to see, we got to enable it in our teams, and we got to let people go. And so this is uh, a little bit about uh, a little bit about that, and I, I won't spend too much time on this one because I have talked a lot about it. But I think first and foremost, you know, the concept of um, obsessing about the user putting the, the user at the center, and in terms of leadership, you know, if you build product, you know, you, you kind of know what I'm talking about, but in terms of leadership, it's really about bringing that mentality to the heart of your decision making as well. Um, so that, you know, you're putting your people, but also the people you're serving at the heart of your decision making. Um, be agile and iterative. And I, I will note that that A there is not a capital A. Um, I, I don't care what kind of agile teams are using and I also don't mean that it's just for software development I don't mean that it's just about building things but you know especially again in that leadership context an agile and adaptable uh, mindset is crucial to leading kind of in this digital era we have to understand that we need a compass not a map maps don't work anymore Maps, uh, at least they work when you're out, and uh, it, but you have to have a compass too. Um, but uh, you know, maps and, and waterfall plans, and the idea that you know we're going to be able to know today all of the things that we have to build and say that yep, it's going to get delivered on this date in this way and on this budget. That doesn't work. It just simply doesn't work. And it also doesn't work if you're trying to do smaller things as well. If you're trying to change your organization, if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to make a big decision about something, um, you need a compass and not a map. And we have to have that agile and adaptable mindset. Um, working in the open is a huge and hard and fundamental piece of the puzzle. Um, because uh, what that does is it allows folks to be part of the conversation in a way that um, is unexpected, especially, especially in government. And, uh, you know, to, I like to sort of talk about uh, information radiators, you know, uh, especially now that my portfolio is a little bit bigger, I can't know everything that's going on. But if I can convince teams to, to be, you know, working in the open and, and having conversations in the open and making decisions in the open, whether that's in Slack or in a Google Doc or in anything else, um, then, you know, I and others have the opportunity to, to search for something that I'm interested in and find it. You know, you, you, you know sort of democratizing uh, information across the team. Um, the other thing, just quite frankly, again, kind of from that recruiting perspective, is, is being very uh, vociferous and open on our blog, I have found, uh, both at ODS and, and when I was in the US at 18F. Um, uh, the 18F blog was the number one people that people often cited to me as, oh yeah, I, I saw your blog and thought, well, I had no idea that was happening in government. Um, and so it, it, you, start to, you start to understand, oh, well, people are talking about technical debt and user research and the picture in the blog post shows them working on a Mac. I didn't know that happened in government. So again, you know, just working out loud has, has side benefits as well. Um, but, you know, that just the, the the open piece is a is a really big linchpin of uh, of kind of all of this work. Um, being data informed, uh, you know, so letting data inform your decision making, um, using it uh, as a, as a tool, not as a hammer, but as a tool, and uh, and following the data. Some great stories from our team that I won't get into because I'm probably already over time, but um, uh, you know, uh, from our team about just following the data and finding opportunity where, uh, you know, to make something better. Being prepared to fail. Um, fail is a bit of a buzzword in the IT community or in the tech community or the startup community, and fail is certainly a, a bad word in government. But 
um, I do think it's important that we talk about it and that we put the F word on people's tongues um, so that you can, you can start to talk about failure not as like a, a capital F, let alone a capital A-I-L-U-R-E, uh, that's going to end up on the front page of a newspaper, but, but as, you know, as, as, a, as a small, low-risk thing that should happen. Because if you're not failing, you're probably not trying too hard, or you're not pushing the edges, or you're not, you know, uh, kind of experimenting in a way that's going to make you and your team better. And so, uh, if you're not trying, or if you're not failing, you're probably not trying. And so, letting folks in uh, positions of of, of power and authority uh, know that their teams should be failing. They should expect it. Again, not big ones, but little ones. Fail a little bit every day. Bring a bad idea you know, to the boss and, and say, we're going to test this. And it might not work. And that's okay, because then we're, we're going to know that that didn't work and we'll go somewhere else. Uh, but having that conversation is, is really super important. And a lot of folks are starting to warm to the idea that, that of course, that, that piece is necessary. But it's, it's hard. Um, so we just kind of have to keep talking about it. Uh, challenge everything. Like I said, especially in government, there are lots of entrenched and outdated practices that we just have to question. And we have to, and again, it's not with judgment, but it's, it's at the root of being able to say, uh, I think there might be a better way. And if you can't show me that it's in a law or a regulation or a policy somewhere, then we can probably change it. And let's look at a better, a newer, a fresher, a more adaptable way to do something. Uh, so again, then from the, the leadership side, it really is about uh, wanting your uh, team to challenge you, expecting your team to challenge you, and thriving on that. Because again, you're going to learn from it. Just like you're going to learn from the small failures and from the things that don't work, uh, you know, I, I want folks uh, challenging me. Uh, embracing the chaos. Um, <laughs> change is hard. Transformation is hard. Uh, the work that we do is hard. Um, partnering with, with ministries is hard. Um, but, uh, but chaos is, uh, is a little bit of what brings life to all of this and, uh, and, and, and does make it fun. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the cornerstone, honestly, of being able to do any of the things I've talked about, you know, empowering your team, uh, enabling folks uh, to, to, to fail. Um, the cornerstone of any of that is, uh, is trust. And building trust is, uh, is messy. It is chaotic. So... You know, I'm trying to make every effort that, that I can uh, to make sure that um, our teams feel supported um, and uh, included. And, uh, you know, it, it just from little things, you know, trying to over communicate, um, but, you know, allowing the right decision to be made by the right person at the right level of the organization. And not everything has to ladder up. Um, I got to hear, uh, what's his name? Uh, Reed. Uh, Reed it's not Reed Hoffman. Hey, yeah, Reed Hastings, uh, the CEO of, of Netflix, um, speak recently, and, and you know he 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 was joking as he said it, but it, there's a very important message there, which he said, "I haven't made a decision in a quarter," you know, <laughs> meaning only the really really big things are laddering up to him. His teams are getting their shit done, and that's what needs to happen. Uh, but that takes trust. Um, and that's hard and chaotic and, and can be messy, so we have to embrace it. Um, and finally, being unreasonably aspirational. Uh, as public servants, you know, we want to do the, the, the most that we can do, the best that we can do, uh, be the best that we can be, uh, because, it, because it is hard and because we do face constraints. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're striving really toward that goal of just making the government work for everyone. Um, creating that culture inside the public service that uh, we think can help us better respond to your needs um, and to your raised expectations. Um, and that in and of itself is uh, I think what keeps me and, and, and our team focused on kind of being uh, perhaps a bit unreasonably aspirational. Um, can't do it alone. 
the ODS is part of a bigger puzzle. Again, we, we work with and for all of those people across ministries with awesome ideas. They just need a little help figuring out how to deliver it. Um, and we need uh, a bit of help ourselves. So I'll, I'll end with that reminder, which is just that uh, there are lots of teams doing really amazing work. Our team is one of them. Uh, there are teams across the government doing really cool work. Uh, Code for Canada is uh, recruiting their new cohort of uh, fellows right now. There's the Canadian Digital Service in Ottawa. And uh, the civic tech community is really thriving and I think has an opportunity uh, in this new mandate to thrive, you know, where the government is going to be looking for ways to uh, help, you know, have business help get, a, you know, get things done, have, have communities help us get things done. Um, and so the civic tech community is a huge piece of this puzzle. If you uh, haven't been to Civic Tech Toronto, they meet uh, every uh, Tuesday. Um, and there are groups like that all over Ontario and, and, and all over. So take a gander. But so just to close, folks from ODS, I see several folks here. Would you mind standing up just for a second? Because I get to stand up here and tell you all this, but they make shit happen. So <laughs> I'm glad you all are here. Uh, because you, you can be our ambassadors and, and maybe recruit a few of, of the rest of us. Um, thanks for having me. I hope, uh, I hope this was uh, somewhat entertaining, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks.